we're back and we are going to start our bracket. So today the theme is legacy and campaign games, specifically campaign games. And the reason we lumped them together, I figured we would just talk about this briefly, is... Oh, and I'm going to set a timer as well for us. So that way we don't go too crazy over. Um, Sounds good. Part of the reason we 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 combine the two is because we feel like campaign is about the storytelling and legacy is just another version of the campaign game with the exception of... Um, Once you're done with the legacy game, you don't really can play... You only play the final scenario over and over again. Right. Whereas campaign games, you can actually play the other scenarios. Yeah. And I mean, like, there's some exceptions to that, which we'll get into, yeah. like, like, Monte Carlo Legacy was an honorable mention, mm -hmm. that, that you still continue to play it afterwards. And then, and same thing with Charterstone, is that you'll have a different board game as other people, but right. you can still play it as a game. Exactly. So, um, our first bracket is going to be Gloomhaven and Risk Legacy. Um, I already know which one you're going to pick, <laughs> so uh, why don't you kick us off? Well, the, my choice is... Gloomhaven, of course. Okay. Um, and I'm going to be a little biased on this one because this is my favorite game. And the reason being is the campaign is amazing. I'm only about 10 scenarios in, really, in the, the thing. Uh, we're playing it slowly, and then with the social distancing, we haven't been able to play it, and I can't find a way um, to play it. But the campaign is... The uh, best way to describe it without any spoilers is that you're a group of... Uh, mercenaries who have been hired to do certain things for certain people including a city of gloomhaven and you go travel through the roads you travel back to the city you upgrade yeah mine's over there on my campaign shell so <laughs> uh but yeah you it's and there's so much content in there and if you wanted to, you can also get the solo scenarios for it, and the campaign is overarching. You open one area, it closes other areas to to for you, just like any pen or like any legacy game out there. Some things open up, other things close. But when you're done with it, you can still go back to it and play those scenarios that you missed out on just to see what would happen. Right. It's only detractor is that they threw everything into it. And it's just hard to get to the table sometimes just because you got to build up the what you're going to do. There's, it's a table leader. It's a massive table leader. Yeah. Yeah. I Well, I don't think that's its only detractor. We'll, we'll talk about more of it later. <laughs> but let, uh, first off, I want to bring up Risk Legacy. That'll be my, my goal, which we just started the campaign of it. it. It kicked off the idea of legacy games. Now, campaign games have been around, but that was the first legacy game. And it took a game that was already uh, that was already popular, Risk, and it flipped it on its head and turned it into effectively a really solid game. Risk mm -hmm. had you know questionable mechanics in it. It wasn't that bad, like as far as older games but, go. Yeah, and for its time, it's still probably one of the older games I enjoy playing. Right, exactly. And then so it added on that whole world changing. And I like how the very first thing you do when you open up the box, and this isn't a spoiler, but uh, on the back of the board, there is a signature uh, sticker that says, uh, every, anybody who signs this board accepts responsibility for what is about to happen. <laughs> it, our, all the choices that are made by us are made by us. Like, yeah. we are the ones to blame, basically. I love that. That has so we're, much we're, good We're the ones that are doing damage to the world. Yeah. And it's your fault, basically, is what the game <laughs> says. Exactly. And I love, like, that flavor in it. Now, we haven't gone all the way through the campaign, so full disclosure, um, we're only on, like, game two or three. Three. Uh, yeah, three. Um, so, we, and we played a few, and I remember back in the day, I have looked into it, and I do know a little bit of the spoilers that come up a little bit later on, and we're not going to give any spoilers during this video, but um, from what I understand about the storyline, I... Uh, as far as campaign goes, it it's a decent story uh, as far as Risk Legacy, but it's not really made to tell a story. It's yeah. mainly made. It's player driven story, basically. It's player driven story, and it's it it's um it was created to kind of be a proof of concept for the legacy mechanism, and that I feel it's its biggest detractor is that if we're talking purely campaign games, which games tell a story over multiple play. I'm not sure Risk Legacy has enough for it. Um, 
So I think this is going to be in a variation. Easy I think that's the us. issue is it, it's the variation. Yeah. It it pretty much risk every time you play it just with new stuff gets added to the board and so so right. from what I'm seeing just from the two games I haven't really looked into it much right. other than that. Now that may change. Our our opinion may change on this depending on mm -hmm. how how much farther we get with it. Um, but yeah, as of this moment, from what I understand of it and what we've learned about it and what we've experienced so far, I can't say that it's as, as story driven as well as, as well Games as that will come up later. Right. Yeah. So, uh, do we agree which one we're sending on? Yeah. Gloomhaven. All right. Sounds good. Then we are going to take a quick break before we go into our next bracket. And our next bracket is going to be which two games? Uh, our next bracket will be Mechs versus Minions versus Mice and Mystics. Awesome. Mechs and Mice. Three seed versus six seed. Yep. Third seed versus six seed. So we're, we're going to pause for a quick break. Turn number two, we are on the third seed versus the six seed in our debate bracket. And that is going to be Mechs versus Minions versus Mice and Mystics. Which side would you like to take? I'll go ahead and take Mice versus Mystics. I probably played it more than you have. And yep. and I'll play my Mechs vs. Minions. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with Mechs vs. Minions. Uh, in Mechs vs. Minions, you have, of course, every this massive box, beautiful components, and amazing pieces. Let's set that aside for a minute, because we know the production value is amazing on it. It is a programming game where... You unlock features for your robots or your mechs. Um, you are unlocking other abilities that you can use. And that is told over the course of a number of campaign games. Um, every time you play it, it adds more to the story. And it, and it is a cooperative experience throughout that, throughout that time. So unlike games like uh, Robo Rally is probably one of its biggest comparisons. Where you're trying to mess up the other player. The cooperative setting not only lends itself to the campaign, but it lends itself to the mechanisms <clears throat> as well. So you're trying not to mess up everybody else. You're trying to to plan out what you need to do to make it work to, so you can beat up the bad guy or, or um, get the item you need from which location without being too confusing to the other players. Um, with that being said... I love it when you when you take damage and it messes up your code. That's one of the best things in it. Is yeah. you have you have a new card that just starts messing with your programming, and that and you've worked so hard to do. Yeah, you've worked so hard to do, and then now you have to mitigate that problem. And it's so thematic, and it's such a smart move. And I also like that when you're when you're adding to your code, the code happens every <laughs> time. So you're like, finally, I got to this location. I need to do this. Now I need to do something completely different. And my robot's already programmed to do this. It's <laughs> exactly. so good. I love it. And I, it's one of the few games that I really enjoy. Um, from the first time I played it, I, I thought it was phenomenal. It lives up to the hype that it has. And I just haven't bought a copy yet because that's a hard... Con I mean, it's granted, it's worth the component price, right? It's, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, inexpensive yeah, yeah. for what you're getting. But man, I have to justify it. <laughs> yeah, and it, it it's not like uh, some of the games we talked about where the, the, it's stupid, like ACG, uh, the living card, or the game that we were talking about, Pathfinder, yeah. where yeah. it's stupid expensive as you keep going. You get everything with that one yeah. price, and the component quality is amazing. Mm -hmm. But we we got to mention the fact that it's video game money that's producing this. It's by, made by the people who do Riot Games, I think it is. What it yes. is. Yeah, Riot Games. Uh, if three came in, did I miss the Gloomhaven or Betrayal part? We The first round of Gloomhaven, yes, but Gloomhaven went on, and we're going to be talking about that here pretty soon. Uh, betrayal, no. Or no, uh, Betrayal Legacy was an honorable mention, I believe. Yes, it was. Yeah. So, and we'll have those posted on YouTube, hopefully within this week. All right. Uh, what is your arguments for Mice and Mystics? Uh, my Sin Mystics, um, this is going to be a little nostalgic for me because it was one of the first games we ever bought when we got into the hobby. Um, and with it, it's, I would have to say, one of the best family campaign games that you can play. Um, it's good to help work with kids and stuff like that. Uh, to me, it's 
been replaced, it doesn't hold up as well as I would hope to do. So I, I am arguing against it at that point. But the fact is, you're these cute little mice tr trying to save their kingdom. But what happens is um, they're not mice to begin with. Uh, something happens and they become mice and you're trying to save this kingdom. And it, it's it an amazing story that's told over chapters. Um, you you have the base game, and then there's a small expansion which just adds more lore, and then there's a bigger expansion that we haven't finished all the way through, but halfway through, and it's really good and it expands upon it. And it's got like uh, rat spawns and bad guys. You got spiders and centipedes and frogs and lizards, and it's 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 an adorable game. Uh, the mechanisms are it's a bit lucky because it's dice rolling and stuff like that, um, and card draft, uh, not drafting, um, blind card draws, so for rewards and stuff like that, so sometimes the rewards can be bad, but I think it's one of the best family games, especially if you want to start playing a campaign game with some of your younger kids, like eight and up, um, it just all depends on your kid too, right. uh, but I honestly think it's a beautiful game too, and one of the one of the games I think really put Plaid Hat on the map. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That and Dead of Winter, I think, are the two big ones. Oh, oh, in just an added little touch, you can download the um, – there's an app for it. I don't know if it's still on the thing back, back in the day uh -huh. where it has someone narrate the story for you. So if you're not a really good reader, you'll actually have someone reading the story for you. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Ithri just said he'll be back for the Gloomhaven round two. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sounds good. We'll see you then. Um, yeah, no, I uh, – I don't disagree. My biggest quell with uh, my <laughs> Mystics was just it wasn't that good of a game. Like, uh, it, it, it did a good job of bringing out the lore. Um, it was effectively a generic fantasy with a new with a new Twist. approach. Yeah. And, yeah. and I appreciated that. That's what got me excited to try it the first time. And then when I played it the first time, I was disappointed in how it was it was super lucky. It was very dice driven. And, uh, uh, my, and then, my thing with that is, and, and this is why we do this podcast, is you're a Euro player and I'm a Mara trash player. Right. Yeah. And and, and yeah, so, it, and that's fair. Like, I, I don't like not having control over something for a mm -hmm. game that's going to be that long and that, in, that much of an investment. I don't like having dice determine what happens to my gameplay because that is a random event. As but, but as far as the lore goes... I do really like how they took, like, you were, I think, just, like, generic fantasy characters like D&D, &D, and then you were yeah. turned into mice, and now you're mice. fighting away, like, spiders and cats in a kitchen. It's like, that, that's yeah. funny. Uh, you're, uh, you're, you're flinging grapes. You're using a spoon as a catapult. Yeah, exactly. Like, that. that is genuinely funny. Um, yeah, Mithri says, Mice and Mystics has, was, was a great flavor, but, yeah, I was pretty underwhelmed by the play. Exactly. If we were ranking these these games by mechanisms alone, hands down, mech, mechs versus minions would get it. But I, since we're de, we're judging them by their storyline, mm -hmm. um, I because that's really what what the core of campaign games are. I think I'm unfortunately gonna have to uh, probably secede to my some mystics. But yeah, much as I was I gonna like. say the same. Yeah. And, a, and another thing what people aren't realizing is, yeah, the, the, it's pretty underwhelming, but you're also got to think about the fact that we're adults. Yeah, that we true. think a little better. This is made to be a family game for people to play with their kids. And for a campaign game that's yeah. approached that way is interesting. I, you know, and that and that's something, being a parent. Oh, it 3 says, I do own all of it, though, including Tail Feathers. I'll probably try to get it. I mean, it, it's not a bad game. It's just that I don't like, I don't personally like the dice heaviness of it. But, um, like, I don't know if I would bring that out for my kids. I mean, maybe if uh, there's other ways that we can be interactive with that. That's what I'm saying. Is, yeah. Um, I just, it's disappointing in a way. But Yeah, but again, you're putting your bias in it because you don't like the way how lucky it can be. True. It doesn't necessarily say all kids don't mind luck. I mean... Oh yeah, no, I'm kids. I, I bet you I could probably luck. play this with our our, our buddy's uh, kids, and they'll probably enjoy it just because how story driven it is. So they're getting told a story, and they get the drive said story. Yeah, yeah, no, I I don't disagree with that. And so as a campaign, 
I think that does enough different than Mex vs. Minions. Mex vs. Minions as, is like leveling up where this is actually yeah. telling you a story and a campaign yeah, exactly. and what you do affects the rest of the 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 story. So, all right, let's let's go ahead and give it to Mice and, and Mystics. Mystics. Yep, sounds good. All right, so what is going to be on our next two bracket or our next bracket? I believe Lord of the Rings: Journey to Middle Earth and Charterstone, the four and five seeds. All right, so tune in for the next clip for Charterstone. And Lord of the Rings Journey to Middle Earth. All right. All right. On to section number three. We have our, is it third and fifth seed? Four and five. Four and five. Lord of the Rings Journey to Middle Earth and Charterstone. Um, I'll go ahead and start it off with Charterstone. Uh, Charterstone, the first and currently only legacy game from... Uh, Jamie Stegmeyer and Stonemeyer Games. Um, he he made a Euro legacy game. I just want to talk about that for a minute. A Euro legacy game. So I'm gonna I'm gonna heavily focus on the mechanisms on this because I feel like that's a very important thing. That was what's intended. Yes, there is a storyline to it. Um, it's not as thorough as as a lot of storylines, but. It does have an overarching story. The changes or the 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 events that you have in the game does affect the storyline. One of the interesting things, and this doesn't give a spoiler really, um, in Charterstone, is that the choices you make will give you one of two story path cards um, normally, and so it'll say put this card in in, in the rulebook. This is what happened in your story. And then you don't get to read the other part of it. Um, on top of that, he has the the way the buildings work is you buy crates. Yeah, you're a legacy. Sign me up. Absolutely, Charterstone, amazing game. And I um, see it I've right only played one game of it so far, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, it it does a really it's a worker placement game, which I know how much you like worker placement. Oh yeah. And and Stonemeyer Games and Jamie Stegmeyer, he does a really good job with the worker placement because. Sure, you can either place your worker or take them back. Uh, or, if you want to go to a spot that somebody else is, technically it's not blocked off. <laughs> you can go there, but that gives that worker back to the player immediately, giving them yet another turn to be more efficient. Yeah, So before not, they have to pull their... Yes, and not only does that uh, mechanism really make for good gameplay... Uh, I know you haven't gotten that far in the story, and I'm not going to spoil it for you, but know that that efficiency plays into the storyline. And and the way it evolves... Right yep, I have mine right back here. The way the story evolves from that, the campaign, really makes sense to why you're doing that and, and how you're doing that and, and the benefits and the drawbacks to doing so is really prominent as the story progresses. So just trust me when I say that that the storyline it's kind of a it's kind of a simple storyline, but because of the way the gameplay works, the the way you're able to uh, bring up those inside stories amongst that uh, it is amazing. Plus, uh, around the middle of the game, and once again, there's a big thing that happens, and I cannot tell you what it is. I want to tell you what it is. I want to talk about it. But when you no get spoilers. There, no spoilers. When you get there, you're my you're gonna be like, wait, are you serious? They actually did this. This is amazing, which really brings out the <laughs> a big part of the storyline. So it's worth looking into. Um with that being said, hopefully that helped convince you that this is the better of the two campaign games. With that being said, Lord of the Rings Middle Earth has a lot of lore into it, so what do you have to say about yeah. that one? So, Lord of the Rings Journey to Middle-Earth um, is probably one of the better games from Fantasy Flight. Um, I, I really enjoy it, and it helps that it's Lord of the Rings. I am a huge fan of Lord of the Rings. When you're talking about generic fantasy, that's really the one that started all the generic fantasy with the elves and the dwarves and all that. Um, and so, I'm a huge, huge fan of it. And the game itself is so good. It's a reskin, I guess you could say, of uh, Matches of Madness, but um, they have they did change some things. Of course, you're going to have to with the Lord of the Rings Legacy, 
But the big thing about it is it's app integrated. So the story is being told to you through the app and the choices you make and the puzzles you make are through the app. And you're going through, I've only played a little bit. I know you're going through like um, trying to find where the darkness is coming. It's like, it's supposed to take place between, what is it? The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings or something like that. Yeah, it, it takes place and so between it's, it. it, it Yeah, so it's kind of like bridging those two. So you're seeing like, uh, uh, what's his name? Sauron, I think it is. Yeah, Sauron. Mm-hmm. His rise and stuff like that. So it's an, it's an interesting um, take on it. Some new characters, some returning characters are in it as well. So I really enjoyed what I played of it. I need to pick it up. I only played the, the store copy a couple times, or once actually. But I really enjoy the, the lore of it and the just seeing them like, okay, so how are they going to bridge these two? How is it going to work is what has me intrigued wanting to go back more. Right. And like I said, the story's told through the app, so you don't need to be a heavy reader like with Mice and Mystics or some of the other games. Sure. Um, the and then the puzzles in the app and stuff like that. And like who's gonna pop up on our, our field. So Yeah. Yeah, I <laughs> also Lord of the Rings signed me <laughs> up again. Yeah. This is gonna be an expensive list for you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I mean just also wanna mention to people about um Charterstone real quick. It is back in stock. So oh, okay, uh, cool. you can find it like on the websites and stuff like that. Yeah. And the recharge pack, if you want to play through the campaign again, which you're not going to get yep. through all the cards anyway. Um, so yeah, I, I don't feel like I really, first off, full disclosure, I like Lord of the Rings journey to middle earth a lot. I think it's a phenomenal game. Um, with that being said, I don't think it brings any more to the story than, than like say mansions of madness. Like, yeah, yeah it tells you story. And the mechanisms are solid, and it's a fun game. But as far as am am I actually playing the story? Am I altering the story? Am yeah. I is my campaign mattering, or am I just trying to get to, to a checkpoint? I and that, that's that's that was, that was uh, going to be my agreement with you that I, I'm more than fine with sending Charterstone through because it your changes you make in the game change how the campaign's going to play. Yes. Whereas Lord of the Rings, I don't feel like that change is going to be there because it's basically telling the story for you. Right. You're just playing the game. If you win the scenario, something else happens. Right. There are little things in Lord of the Rings, like if you get too much darkness or too much of this going on, that can change a little bit as the story goes. But it's not stuff that you affect. It's just that you didn't beat the timer. Right. Yeah, exactly. You you failed at the timer. You lost. Uh, it's basically playing a video game at that point. Or like, mm-hmm. what do they call them? Walking simulators? Or Yeah, yeah, yeah. Point. It, it's, it's more than that, but I mean, not much. It's yeah. it's it's good. It has such a great lore backing it up. And oh, honestly, yeah. I think... And it's, and it's Lord of the Rings. Me. If this was going up against anything else, or if we're just talking about a fun game to play, yeah, Lord of the Rings would win hands down. Yeah. But Charterstone affects you you affect what the game what happens to the game yes yeah absolutely so uh i think we agree charterstone is going through yep awesome so there's charterstone uh we have one more leg and as far as round one and that is the second seed with uh the seventh seed and that's seventh seed pandemic legacy versus which one hogwarts battle the deck building uh what is it hogwarts battle a cooperative deck building game. All right, Sounds which is good. Harry Potter. Harry Potter and Pandemic Legacy. Wow, what a! Never thought I'd have those. <laughs> in the same list. But uh, okay, let's go ahead and uh, do a quick pause and then join us in for the next video where you can see that. All right, I do believe we are recording. I hope so. <laughs> um, yeah, should be. All right, we are on the next seed, <coughs> um, which is going to be. Uh, of campaign games between Pandemic Legacy and Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. Um, I hope you don't mind that I'm volunteering to take on Pandemic Legacy because I have played both season one and two. That's my reasoning. Yeah, that's um, fine. And and for for the sake of this argument, technically that we're talking about season one specifically. Yes. But um, I am going to tie it into season two as well. Uh, and then so by all means when you're talking about Harry Potter, Hogwarts Battle, include the expansion with it, you know. Okay, sounds yeah. good. Cool. All right. Um, would you like to go first this time? Sure. All right. Um, the one we're talking about is Harry Potter, a Hogwarts Battle cooperative deck-building game. That's the entire title, which is ridiculous. 
Everybody just calls it Hogwarts Battle. Um, it's it's a great uh, campaign style game. Um, if you're a fan <laughs> of Harry Potter, um, it uses the the campaign itself is the different books or movies in this case because they use a lot of screen caps from the movies on the cards. Um, and what I like about it is it plays a lot of the same, but as you go through the campaign, your characters are aging and becoming more powerful in their magical spells. So they get abilities, and then you become proficient in certain classes, so you get more abilities, and it helps you as you go along. And you're literally playing the, the – each chapter is one of the books. So the first chapter is basically teaching you how to play a deck building game if this is your first deck building game. And it's a lot easier than, as you say, you get to chapter seven and things become a lot more amped up and ramped up because you're going against the Death Eaters and yep. they're, they're the big bads and stuff like that, and it becomes a little harder. But as you go through the campaign, more stuff comes in, like spells to help you. And these are not spoilers. It, it, it's just what's in the game. Spells are going to help you. They become more powerful because you're becoming more proficient in your, your magic. Yep. What uh, happens after you beat the game is there's an expansion called uh, the Big Book of Monsters, I think it's what it's called. And it, it adds... A little bit more flavor to it gives you you actually are back in school age so your really powerful character that you've built along the way is back to like the fourth year basically and they're not as powerful they still have some abilities adds a new character in it i really enjoy it um it's tough it's a very tough game especially as you get further along um especially the thing about it is i think it it's one of the few games, and this is going to be a detractor for it, is that it doesn't scale well. It's easier when you're playing a two-player game than it is when you're playing with a four-player game. That makes a four-player game tends to ramp it up a lot harder. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you know, and, and full disclosure, like I, so as far as this debate goes, you know I don't like the, the source uh, of the, of the storyline. I don't care about Harry Potter. I, in fact, I'm quite, I, I, I find it quite annoying. But the game itself was good enough that I did play the entire campaign because I enjoyed the game. And in fact, so much, I decided to buy the game. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. This is Toy Story, the obstacles and adventure game. And that's because it's the same game. It's, it's, it's the same game. It's the same game. I mean, there, there's it changes some things differently it, later it, on in the it, campaign. It fixes some of the flaws that people right. had with Hogwarts Battle. There, There is a right. house rule that I have to play with Hogwarts Battle. Um, yep. that uh, they fix in the thing is where you had to spend money to wipe the board because sometimes you're just stuck with spells that are not going to be useful. So you have to right. pay right. to wipe the board. That's the house rule that we play. Yep. And they fix it in Toy Story. Yeah, exactly. And and I bring that up not to just be to, – to say – obviously I like the theme better in Toy Story. I was, I was always a Toy Story fan. But I bring it up to show – how good of a campaign game can it be if you can paste another theme onto it so easily and have it work just the same? That means it could be a great campaign game. <laughs> well, uh, uh, clearly, like that, uh, I don't think that's a campaign game. It's an evolving game, yes. Um, and yes, there is. No, no, no it's a campaign because you're opening. Story. Yeah, you're, you're telling the story of Harry Potter, but you're not changing anything. But the, here, here's my argument against your argument. We don't know how far have you gone into uh, Toy Story. That's true. I've gone into Game Three. Yeah, because oh, things six. change in Game Four. Games change uh, four, five, and seven. There's there's things that they add to right. it, especially I think in six, no seven. There's right. things that they add in at seven that are um, that change it a little bit, and that they add on to it in the expansion. Sure, but. You don't know if those same kind of changes are in Toy Story, so you can't say it, the gameplay is exactly the same. You can't say the campaign is exactly the same. It, you're right. I can't say the campaign is exactly the same because I haven't gotten that far. And part of part of the reason I did that before the quarantine happened and before we started staying home more, it, I hadn't watched Toy Story four yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, is Toy I, Story four part of it? I believe so. Yeah, I and and even if it's not, I wanted to make sure I got the movie. But I'm pretty sure it is, from what okay. I understand. So I I wanted to make that a point before I before I played it any further. And then I just haven't gotten it to the table as much yet. Maybe I'll try and get it to the table today. That would be really fun. Um, but so my 
my side is going to be Pandemic Legacy Season 1, um, which, I'm. <laughs> why are we even debating at this point? If you played Pandemic <laughs> Legacy, you know how why that was the number one game on Board Game Geek for the longest time. Till Gloomhaven. To Gloomhaven. <laughs> until Gloomhaven happened. Um, but it knocked out uh, Twilight Struggle, which was on there for like five years. It was a, it was a long time. But Pandemic Legacy, um, it had everything going for it. First off, if you liked Pandemic, it had that brand new evolution of it, and it was amazing at, at what it did. If you didn't know anything about Pandemic, it gave you this amazing experience of changing the board, evolving it, and along a narrative, and it gave a really depthful story. And everything you did really did change what happened in the game. You've played through yeah. season one. You you can agree with that. Every yeah. every choice, every choice in that game mattered for everything in the future. And the wins losses matter too. Yeah, the wins losses. If my character dies, he's gone. He's yeah, it doesn't get more campaign than the realism. You tear up their card; they're dead. Everything mm -hmm. you worked for with that character doesn't matter if they're dead. Because they're gone. <laughs> it is amazing <laughs> at what it does. Um, yeah, and so you gotta be like, I don't want to take the scar, so yeah. I need to leave the city. <laughs> right, exactly. Like, or I die. That made just your choices so impactful. It's like when your character dies in D&D, &D, technically you can make the same character, right? Or like something really similar, but like, you can't in this. Your, yeah. your character died. My wife had a character, he was the medic, and his name was Sushi. And every game, she was so scared to put Sushi in in one of the cities at at the possibility or the risk that he might get another scar or he might die. Every character mattered to us, and we had and whole it, backstories to him because of that. And what, what I like about Pandemic Legacy, too, is that, yeah, she had Sushi, but if she's like, okay, this character is not really helping us, why don't yeah. we take this character out and start a new character? You don't yeah. necessarily to stay with the same character and I, I did like that aspect yeah yeah exactly and then sometimes you had to do it you're like man this character is just better at this but he's kind of a jerk yeah uh, or uh, <laughs> another good thing too is it makes you make choices such as um i think i was the researcher where i could hold five cards i willingly took a scar for the team where it dropped me down to four card was just, just your basic <laughs> yeah. yep it's like all right fine I will take the scar, and I will be as good as the rest of you, I guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, oh man, the backstories in that I think are amazing. Um, yeah. I don't know if we need to to hammer this out anymore. Um, uh, my, my main thing is, if you like Harry Potter, check out the deck-building game. Yeah. It's, it's really good. With Pandemic Legacy, there's a reason why it's number two. My only detractor for Pandemic Legacy, the game play itself is pretty much the same. So after we were done with it... We were tired of Pandemic. That's why we haven't busted out Season 2. Yeah, which is fair. Which is fair. I mean, I, having played through Season 2, I will tell you, it's a whole different beast. It's, that's that's what I hear. It's, it's just people are people are burnt out from Pandemic Legacy Volume 1. So Yeah. yeah. That's, that's why that's we're fair. playing all these other campaign games. Yeah. that I'm glad I finished my first campaign Legacy Season 1 earlier. And I think later this year is when Season 3 is coming out. So, uh... Just that anticipation. I'm already more excited to play a game that I don't even know if it's coming out yet than I am to play a game that I own that I know I like. So interesting, just before we end this uh, part of it, uh -huh. um, there was actually a couple upsets. The six seed Mice and Mystics defeated the three seeds Mechs versus Minions. Mm -hmm. And not really an upset here, but Charterstone actually upsurped uh, the four seed Lord of the Rings Journey to the Middle Earth. Yeah. But the big boys moved on. Yep, all of the big boys. We have... Going into round number two, we have four games. Gloomhaven versus Mice and Mystics, then Charterstone versus Pandemic Legacy. So, by all means, tune in. We're going to upload the video. I'm going to stop the recording right now, and then we'll get started again here in just a few moments. Sounds good.